Not sure if it's a month or an ACE inhibitor. <laughs> That's really good. Okay. Hey kid, want to analyze some audit data? You might get a publication out of it. <laughs> Calzone. Pyoglitazone. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a doctor working in Cambridge. And because it seems like you can't be a medical YouTuber without doing some kind of medical meme review, I thought we'd do a medical meme review in this video, but it's gonna be a little bit different in that I'm gonna be reacting specifically to uh, memes generated from the Cambridge University Medical School. So these are all fairly niche, uh, but I don't know. I've never seen these before. I just downloaded them all off the Facebook group. So we'll see how they go and hopefully they won't offend too many people. So number one, all right, organizing elective. Oh, okay, so this is a reference to the fact that medical electives, which is, you know, this holiday that you go on in your fifth year of medical school, you're supposed to be doing like, you know, medical stuff in a different country for two months, but a lot of people treat it as a, like a sort of going to the beach. I think that's what this is getting at. Roses are red, bones they can fracture, collagenase clostridium is diffusion can fracture. That's really good. <laughs> Collagenase Clostridium histolyticum. So Clostridium histolyticum is a type of en uh, is a type of bacteria, not enzyme. Collagenase is an enzyme that it produces, and Jupiter's contracture is like this weird thing that happens to your hand in certain conditions, like liver disease. That's quite funny. Student doctor, I'm going to prescribe a course of BK8644. So this is a reference to the fact that in our second year of of medical school, we learn about all these weird esoteric drugs like BK8644, which are only used experimentally and not actually used in real life. So you know. That's, that's funny. Yo dog, I hear you like feedback. So I asked for feedback on the session on giving feedback. That's kind of funny because Cambridge as a medical school is obsessed with getting feedback from the students. This is a good thing, uh, objectively, but the students like to make fun of the fact that we get asked for feedback so often. In prac skills and someone notice and notices your juicy veins. Yeah, that's a standard med school thing. So apparently I have quite juicy veins. And so if you see someone with juicy veins, then you think, oh, I want to put a cannula or take your blood and, you know, to get a bit of practice. So we learn by practicing on each other. So that's a reference to that. Clinical skills I've signed off. <laughs> okay, so every medical school like needs to, has this, every medical student like everywhere has, the, has these kind of log books that you're supposed to sign off when you've done certain clinical skills, like putting in a catheter or putting in a cannula. Um, and the joke here is that <laughs> everyone kind of waits until the last minute to get these signed off. And the the university emails us all says that, hey, you should have your clinical skills signed off by the end of the year. And no one's got it signed off by the end of the year. So they have to extend the deadline. And it's kind of a big joke. But you know, obviously by the end, it's a requirement from the General Medical Council that we have these skills signed off. So we get around to doing them eventually. Grad students starter pack. Oh, okay. So grad students are, you know, people who have done degrees and then applied to medical school, which is not normal in the UK. Normally in the UK, you go straight into medical school from second from high school. Whereas in the US and in other places, you do your undergrad degree first and then you do med school. So it's, this is making fun of grad students, I guess. So Bachelor of Arts, yeah, that means I've got a degree. <laughs> Zimmer frame, which means they're really old. Uh, wedding ring, which means I'm married and time turner. Oh, right. I think that's a reference to either, either they're trying to travel back in time or they just get a lot of stuff done. I'm not sure, but that's quite funny. Uh, one does not simply find something on med ed. So that's a reference to MedEd, which is the sort of virtual learning environment online, sort of on, effectively online Google Drive of, of the medical school. It's based on Moodle, which I think a lot of universities use. Uh, and famously, it was hard to find stuff on MedEd because clearly the students didn't know how to use a computer properly. Uh, April, not sure if it's a month or an ACE inhibitor. <laughs> that's really good, okay. So ACE inhibitors are a class of drug like captopril, enalapril, lisinopril, and they all end in P-R-I-L. So this is funny. April, <laughs> not sure if it's a month or an ACE inhibitor. Nurse, so you've been in a coma since 1978. Medical student, how will I pass MODA? All my knowledge is completely out of date. <laughs> That's where you're wrong, kiddo. <laughs> so MODA stands for Mechanism of Drug Action, and that is the, the pharmacology lectures that we get in our second year. And this is again, a reference to the fact that we get taught about all these drugs that are you know, historical and old fashioned and stuff. When the consultant asks you where the falciform ligament is, it's in the tummy somewhere. This guy, is, it, is this Monkman from the, from like two years ago in University Challenge? Uh, yeah, I mean the falciform ligament I think is part of the liver, but pff, that would be as far as I can go. Can't be timetabling error if, if don't tell them the timetable. <laughs> okay, I, th I think this is pretty standard in all universities in the world that, you know, sometimes the admin can get a little bit complicated, so it's hard to find timetables for things. When exam term hits you like 
profound personality change. Oh, that's a good reference. So this is a reference to, um, I think it's a patient called, was it, was it Phineas Gage? I think that was his name. He was a guy who was in a railroad accident where like a railroad rod went through his brain, but he completely survived. He just, it just went through his frontal lobe. So he had profound personality change. And this is one of the classic cases in, uh, in psychology. I think that was, that was his name. Don't quote me on it. Uh, when your supervisor asks you for causes of chest pain and you want to show off, nutcracker esophagus, Takotsuba cardiomyopathy, precordial catch syndrome, large cell neuroendocrine carcinoma of the lung, and Brigada syndrome. <laughs> These are all quite rare, quite niche things. Whereas obviously causes of chest pain are, you know, heart attack or pulmonary embolism or, you know, stuff like that. Hey kid, want to analyze some audit data? You might get a publication out of it. <laughs> All right, this is absolutely classic. So uh, it's like a common thing among, amongst medical students that you're trying to get publications. Uh, you know, you're, you're trying to get your name on an academic paper. And it's common knowledge that the easiest way to do that is to do an audit uh, or to analyze some data from an audit where you just collect loads of data about stuff going on in the hospital and then you write it up. Uh, and the joke here is the medical student is just running away as soon as, you know, probably the doctor has said, that, has, has said this to them. When she asks you what you do if the hip exam was normal. Oh! In our fifth year, we have these, uh, in, as part of the exams, you have to do a newborn baby check on like a doll and you have to sort of examine the hips to see if there's any dislocation of the hip. And one of the questions that I think I got asked in the exam was, what would you do if the hip examination was normal? And that's a bit baffling because you expect the question, what would you do if it was abnormal? And you've got like a list of things you do if it was abnormal, but if it's normal, then you're like, well, like, I don't know, <laughs> it's, it's normal, who cares? Um, yeah, deciphering CPC abbreviations. CPC stands for Clinical Pathological Conferences, and they are, uh, they're the pathology lectures that we had at, at Cambridge. Um, and obviously, like in, in all of medicine, there are so many kind of abbreviations and acronyms and stuff that when you're just starting out in your fourth year or your first year of clinicals, it's actually really hard to, to figure out what things stand for, so you have to end up Googling everything. I'm now going to assess for right ventricular heave. Oh, banger. Okay, so that's Jeremy Corbyn touching up someone. Uh, accidentally. I think I think this went around sometime like last year or two years ago. Jeremy Corbyn is the leader of the Labour Party in the UK and he famously had this moment on TV where he was kind of holding his, his hand up like this against some random woman. I don't know who she is. But this is actually how you assess for right ventricular heave. So the right ventricle is a part of the heart and in certain heart conditions, kind of if you, if you do that, you can feel like the movement against your hand and that would be called heaving. Uh, it's a sign of certain, certain heart conditions. So that's really funny. Uh, deciphering exam abbreviations, same thing. I have no idea what this is talking about. Oh, this is saying that, th so that's Theresa May, and she looks to be a bacteria or a pathogen or something trying to attack a cell, and the cell is protected by the NHS, the National Health Service of the UK, and this is Jeremy Corbyn fighting off this bacteria. So this is a very left-wing, pro-Labour government way of kind of looking at politics in the UK. Calzone, pioglitazone. <laughs> Pioglitazone is a diabetes drug. Will we find intelligent life? Could it be right here on earth? Could it, could it be this man? Let's rank applicants by deciles, but make university blind. Oh, okay. This is, this is really salty. So um, in the UK, when, when you finish your final year of med school and you're getting jobs, jobs within the National Health Service over up and down the country, where you end up is sort of based around how many points you get in this score out of 100. And part of the contributing factor to your score out of 100 is where you ranked in your medical school. So if you were in the top 10%, you would get 10 points. So top 20%, you'd get nine points. Top 30%, you'd get eight points. And if you were in the bottom 10%, you would only get one point. So it means that, you know, the higher you rank in your medical school, the more points you get in this thing. But people at, you know, supposedly elite prestigious universities like Oxford and Cambridge love to complain about the fact that these rankings are university blind. So the joke is quite elitist. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of this. The thing they're complaining about is that, oh, well, you know, if you came first decile, if you came top 10% in a low ranked university, you would be getting more points than someone who came top 20% at Cambridge. And the idea is that supposedly coming, you know, ranking higher at Cambridge and Oxford would be harder than ranking higher at a kind of less prestigious university. So this is a very kind of salty meme based around that. My heart, dobutamine stress echogram. Okay. Uh, 0 0.5 mils of one in a thousand adrenaline. Okay, so dobutamine is a type of drug that stresses the heart. And an echocardiogram is a sort of ultrasound of the heart that you can look and see what the heart looks like. 0 0.5 mils of one in a thousand adrenaline. 
is sort of what you get if someone if someone is having anaphylaxis um, or you know a, a severe allerg allergic reaction, you would inject adrenaline into them to try and dampen down the response to that. Results are up on campuses, guys. <laughs> so that's when the exam results come out online and when your heart goes like <laughs> I can fully relate to that. That's not 100 percent true. When the beat drops, second degree heart block, morbid's type <laughs> when the beat drops. <laughs> so that's funny because this is a type of heart rhythm, morbid's type one slash wanky back, part of second degree heart block, where you get heartbeat, 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 and then you drop a beat. So you miss a beat, and it's called a drop beat. So when the beat drops, that's that's kind of funny. A 52-year-old man has had a laceration suture closed. Three ampules of lidocaine, 0.1% were used with one in two billion adrenaline. 16 sutures were placed over five minutes. How many bananas can you eat for lunch? Yeah, classic. Sometimes the, uh, the perception of exam questions is that this is what they're like. <laughs> right, so a few years ago, the university decided to do this thing about trying to teach resilience to medical students about because, you know, a big part of being a doctor is about being resilient in the face of adversity. But we just kept on getting these emails like every single week about, you know, a reminder to take part in this resilience questionnaire. <laughs> and so this is a reference to <laughs> how the university was obsessed with, you know, trying to get us to fill out this resilience questionnaire. Arthroscopy for knee OA, changed my mind. This is arthroscopy for knee osteoarthritis. So arthroscopies are a sort of procedure that orthopedic surgeons do where they kind of put a hole into the knee and kind of look through it with a camera. But famously, um, there have been loads of studies, well, a few studies that have shown that the actual operation is just as good as sham surgery. So sham surgery is when you put a cut in the skin and you like anesthetize the patient and stuff and you do everything as if you're gonna do the operation, but you don't do the operation. And it's one way of trying to figure out the placebo effect of surgeries because it's easy enough to find a placebo effect if you're just taking a pill. You know, you just give someone a sugar pill instead that doesn't do anything. But it's a lot harder when someone's actually having surgery because the fact they've got a wound, the fact they're recovering, all of these factors play a part in the placebo, in the, in the placebo effect. So um, what this is referencing is that there's some evidence that says that actually arthroscopy is identical to placebo. So the operation doesn't actually do anything. And so this guy is saying, change my mind, this is legit. Uh, it's quite clever. Me, free sandwiches, ethical objections to pharma reps. Oh, that's another interesting one. So uh, drug company reps, uh, like sales salespeople, often come into hospitals and into, into universities and provide free sandwiches for lectures or talks in return for being able to plug their drug for five minutes during the thing. Kind of like sponsored YouTube videos where the YouTuber will plug Skillshare.com or audible.com forward slash Ali Abdal or check out my link in about Notion or brilliant.org forward slash Ali or curiositystream.com or whatever. They plug that in return for money, usually, uh, or free stuff. Um, but in medicine, like the, we allow these salespeople to plug their drugs and saying, oh my, this uh, like rivaroxaban is a better uh, anti, uh, anticoagulant than apixaban because of this, this, this. And in return, they give us free sandwiches. So there are some people that have an ethical objection to this. They say that drug companies should not be allowed to buy their way in to stuff by offering free sandwiches. This is actually not as bad as it used to be in the past. In the past, you used to get drug companies kind of flying doctors first class to holidays and stuff and then selling them the drug. How long has this been going on? Patient a while, some time. Oh man, <laughs> this is an absolute classic. So one of the questions that obviously we need to ask as doctors when someone says, doctor, I've got back pain. You ask, how long has it been going on for? And the patient says, oh, a while. And then you're like, okay. <laughs> uh, and then you try and get them to clarify a bit further. You're like, oh, you know, what do you mean by a while? And they would say like, oh, you know, just like some time. But like the right way of approaching that is, okay, are we talking minutes or hours or days or weeks? And they're like, oh no, no, oh, oh no, doctor. It's been going on for five years. And then you kind of get the information you need. So this is a reference to this unimpressed looking kid when someone says a while. Anyway, um, we still got a fair few memes to cover, but this video has gotten very long and I don't, know, I don't know to what extent these are actually interesting for people who are not at the university. I think a lot of them are general medical student-y things, but a lot of them are sort of inside jokes and, and stuff. But you know, hey, everyone's doing medical meme reviews, so I thought I'd make this the first one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this. Um, I'll put some other random videos in a playlist over here, so you can check those out if you like. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.